Welcome back. I'm Sean with Backhill Supply out of Salt Lake City, Utah. I first want to thank all of you that have watched our videos on YouTube and made comments and even emailed me or called me and told me your comments. And that helps me to make videos that are uh, more informative or that maybe I need to clarify some of them. So thank you for those comments and I hope you continue to watch. So today I want to talk about the RP4A and draining the relief valve. Uh, we've already gotten to that time of the year and many of you probably have already blown out your sprinkler systems for the year but I think this is important enough that you ought to watch this and make sure that on your model that you did get the water out of the relief valve there is no way to blow the water out of the relief valve area of the RP4A and this is a cutaway of it um, water gets trapped on the back side of the diaphragm and in between this brass wall and there's nowhere for that water to go and so as it freezes it tends to break the relief valve stem um, and bow the cover so that in the springtime you go to turn your sprinkler system on and you get a fine mist blowing out from where the cover bolts to the rest of the body and it could just be in one area or all the way around or you could have dripping from there I just want to make a comment that none of the manufacturers recommend blowing out through their backflow assemblies. I know it appears to be convenient because of the test cock fittings that are on the top, but that's not what they're there for. There are better ways to drain these. And, but I'm just going to continue from this point talking about um, what to do with this relief valve. So <clears throat> this relief valve stem, this is the one that goes in the half inch and one inch assemblies and it should come out all in one piece just like this and if it doesn't then it's broken and this is the actual stem that goes in there and it usually snaps right where this o-ring sits this groove right there and that's just because there's nowhere for the water to go and it starts to freeze and expand and it just snaps it in half so all you have to do once you've blown out the rest of your system you've drained the water out of this um, you take the cover plate off and the only purpose of doing this is to get the diaphragm away from the body of the assembly so that that water can drain and if you want to pull that relief valve stem assembly out and just inspect it and see what it looks like from the the season that would be a good idea so you'd know what it's like uh, for the next year and one more bolt to go here and that's all it is to it the plate comes off and the diaphragm comes off it with it as well and then you can pull that relief valve stem out if you want and just inspect it and take a close look at it. Look at the rubber, make sure that it, that's still in good shape and you don't need to have some kit for the beginning of next season. And then you just put this back together, you put the diaphragm back on, and the cover plate. Just line up the bolt holes and start your bolts. And then you can just leave it that way for the rest of the winter. Um, now, one other comment about doing that. If you're going to leave your backflow assembly in line for the winter, there is not a 100% guarantee or way to prevent your ball valves from freezing and breaking. If you have those union fittings that are on both sides of your backflow assembly that hopefully the installer put in when they installed your backflow, you can undo those unions and you can take your backflow assembly and put it into a warm uh, place in your home or garage as long as it's heated and you can prevent that from freezing. But the ball valves, as soon as you turn the water on into your backflow assembly, there's nowhere for that water to go. You can't blow it out. And um, I have an example here of, this happens to be an Apollo ball valve too, and it freezes and cracks and I'll try and insert some pictures in the video, water gets trapped on the side of this ball. And whether it's all the way shut or all the way open, it presses against this white Teflon seal. And so the best thing that you can do is to turn your handle to a 45 degree so it leaves a ball, the ball partway away from the Teflon seal on both ends. And what that does is if the water does start to freeze, it gives it a place to go around that ball on both ends. So when you're done for your winterization, turn your handles to a 45 on both sides, and that'll lessen the chance of that ball valve freezing and breaking and cracking. Now, I told you that the problem for the freezing in the relief valve happens in the sizes uh, two inch and smaller, 
but it's only on the one inch that I've seen the cover plate bow. But let me show you on the inch and a half, inch and a fourth inch and a half, and two inch relief valve stems of the RP4A, they've got a hollow spot here in the center. And they've got four little notches around the base of that that connects to the metal plate. And water can still get in there. And unless you take this relief valve stem out in the winter time and shake it to get the rest of the water out, or better yet, remove this screw and this plate to make sure the water's out of it, and then put it back together and put it all back in the assembly, you're going to find that the stem is going to crack and break where the screw, the screw goes into this relief valve stem, and it breaks down inside of there. So that's one caution that I would make. Now, this also applies to the RP40s, which you will find in the Combraco name and also the Apollo name. And on their 3 quarter 1 inch, it's a little bit different stem. It's a little bit thicker and a little bit beefier. But the problems I've seen in the past is from where this screw hole is, there'll be a crack that runs down that and down the side of the stem. And that'll cause you to get these nuisance drips. Now this stem here, it looks like they may have redesigned it or they've injected it differently. Because I can see these uh, four little circles on the base here. And I think those are points of injection for the molding. So hopefully they're stronger than they have been in the past. But still, that's a, an issue that you want to be aware of. On the inch and a fourth, the two inch RP40s, it has a stem that's very similar to the ones on the RP4As. It's got a hollow section there. It's got a place for the screw to go in to hold the metal plate in place. Um, and it's got three notches around the base that hit the back side of that metal plate. And water can still get in there. So unless you take this metal plate off or sit there and shake it and make sure the water's out of it, you may have the same issue where that stem freezes and breaks that uh, place where the screw goes. Now one last comment about um, blowing out your systems. I told you that ma the manufacturers do not recommend that you blow out through the backflow assembly. There is one, one manufacturer that has made an adjustment to their backflow and that's on the Wilkins 375. It has this plastic insert which makes it very easy to undo these two screws, pull this wedge out, pull this housing out and you can put it inside your house. But then they've made this fitting that will take its place and you can put that in there real easy and attach your fittings for your air compressor and blow through the backflow assembly to your sprinkler lines. So that's something that you may want to look into as well. One other thing on these uh, RP4A covers that if they do bow, I have had quite a bit of success pounding those flat on a vise and I'll insert a little video or maybe put it after it or make a link to it. I haven't decided how I'm going to do that. But I just put it on, my vise has a flat piece of metal behind the vise and it's just larger than the cover plate of the relief valve. And I just put it on there and I pound it flat and I hit the outside edges. I don't hit in the center, I don't hit the raised areas that are on the cover plate. And then after I've pounded it with just a normal hammer, um, I kind of rotate it around on that flat metal surface and I look to see if I can see any daylight through there. If I do, then I hit that area a little bit harder. Um, and that's a good way to try and fix your backflow assembly without having to buy a new part. Um, and like I said, I've had success. I think last year was the first time I haven't ha been able to do that on about three of them. It just didn't work. So. Um, the worst that happens is you end up buying a new relief valve cover. So pound away. I hope that this video has been helpful and I appreciate you taking the time to watch it. Thank you very much.